Now have I got a project for you. Explodable two liter gun targets. It's pretty cool, really. You just uh, turn them into a little tiny pressure vessel. Pressure the ever loving snot out of them. And poke a wee hole in it. It's a neat afternoon project that I take absolutely no liability or responsibility in any way, shape, or form. But dang, I've had me some fun. Doesn't matter. It's a pretty simple concept. It's a Schrader valve set into a pop cap. You're going to want to find yourself high quality pop caps. This is what I've discovered is there is a low pressure, i.e. Uh, cranberry ginger ale, and then a high pressure like what you'd see on um, Sprite, Coke, Pepsi. Higher quality cap, a little thicker, a little stronger cap. You're going to want to get those, but this will work for our demonstration purposes. The building is about as simple as drilling a hole in the cap. Well, that's not entirely true. There's a few more parts that go in there. So here's your Schrader valve. Pretty straightforward little device. That is 8th inch NPT. This is a, a shoulder nut. And what I did, and here's the only part, I mean, these are cheap, these are free, O-rings are just stupid, right? This is the only part that you might not have and you might have to go get. This is an 8th inch NPT tap. And what I did is I re-tapped this shoulder nut. 8th inch NPT. Which then allows me to screw this into it. These Schrader valves will not screw into a regular nut. Although you can buy 8th inch NPT bulkhead fittings if you want to. Find yourself a washer that it won't slip through and an o-ring that just goes over. Okay? At that point, Bob is your uncle. Drill a hole in your cap. It's got to be centered. If you miss it by too much, when you go to tighten up your nut, the castle will hit, and this one is off center. Hopefully, you can see that. The castle is going to hit that flange. You might not have ever considered how a pop cap actually works. Threads hold nothing. What you've got is this basically a, a miniature compression fitting right here inside. This beveled edge slips down inside the top lip. Of your pop bottle and so if your compression nut because you're going to compress these two together you know if the whole mess is drilled off center then this will distort that ring and if that ring is distorted it won't hold pressure and worse you can't really trust it that's a screw up luckily for me i've got myself another one so let's see if i can drill that one in the middle and we'll be right back. I believe I actually did it worse. Yeah, I managed to screw that up. Whatever. We're done now. Take a razor knife. Just remove. You don't want to cut into it at all. Hear the train coming. Just want to remove any any lips you made. All right, that ought to work fine. Take your pieces. You've got to have the washer here because you're going to put quite a bit of pressure on that fitting when you're squishing your rubber o-ring. Take your modified nut, your bulkhead fitting, however. Make sure she's nice and centered there. Tighten 
You're up. That's going to squish the great on Thelma right out of your rubber o-ring, but it should also remain contained inside that ring without bulging. So that should be good right there. Of course, the proof is in the pudding when you go and pressure it up. What you do by screwing it on and pumping it up. It's been my experience that they pop real nicely at the 90 to 100 PSI range. However, the internet tells me that these things start exploding at the 120 PSI range. I, it is not going to take your head off, right? But you aren't going to be using your hands for a while. So at your own risk there, and you'll just have to experiment on your own. When I pressurize it, I wrap it in a towel, put it on the ground, and kind of up against the wall. Keep my fingers back, kind of like airing up a tire. To give you a good idea of the explosive power, I'm going to go ahead and get my balls on. Yep, I'm going to blow it up inside a tub of cheesy balls. We're going to pack this towel around the top of it. Keep it centered. Muffle the noise some. My poor dear neighbors already come over here on somewhat of a regular basis. To their credit, just to see if we're okay, which is nice of them. Now, we're going to go for right there, and I'm going to move you back. This is just an air gun. You know those guys that come around hawking tools out of the back of a semi-truck? The company that does it around here is called Cummings. Cummings Tools. Not affiliated with the motor at all. Well, anyways, it turns out in the back of their crappy catalogs, they actually have a bunch of these Chinese air guns. And I'll be dang. For the, uh, like 40 bucks? They've killed me a fair bit of gophers in locations where a regular gun not be appropriate. Ready? There's the entrance hole in that tub. Again, this was just a pellet. So... That means we came in here at the bottom somewhere, which is why we ended up with the uh, Rocket Man, as opposed to the Atom Bomb. Either way, good, honest, clean, fun. They're just as recyclable after you do this as they are before. So think of it as one more link in the chain. Basically, if you don't do this, you hate Mother Earth, and that's not cool. An edit, a revision, an addendum. After sending a Schrader valve up to the good folks at the International Space Station, I decided it'd be a good idea to solder on a wire loop to give me an attachment point for a, a ribbon or a string, something that would enable me to recover the top. Because it stinks to have to make them over and over again.